Are private county jails cutting corners for profit? That is the central question tonight as we learn about deaths inside private jail cells. Some North Texas families blame medical neglect. Tanya Eiser has this WFAA investigation. They don't really care too much about the inmates. She was a lovely girl, full of spunk. Begin CPR now. One, two, three. She was way too young to die. And just because they're in jail doesn't mean they're dogs. He still tells me, is my daddy coming to get me? <laughs> and I have to tell him no. He knows he's in heaven. People are dying and they shouldn't be dying. You just listen to the voices of those who say a company called LaSalle Corrections ignored pleas for medical attention. All three of these people died in jails run by LaSalle, a private for-profit company. This is a company that puts uh, profit over human life. Lance Lowry has spent decades working in Texas prisons. Should jails or prisons ever be privatized? Never. If you have to privatize a jail to make it more efficient, then the people that are operating that and the county leadership need to be fired. All three of the families have filed lawsuits demanding LaSalle be held accountable for their deaths. We asked the company repeatedly for an interview. They never called us back. In their responses to the lawsuits, LaSalle denies any wrongdoing. Okay, come on, let's go. Good job. Kick it to me! Now let's tell you about the first of those three inmates. That's my daddy in heaven. Ronald Beasley. With Jesus. He was an awesome dad, even though he was only with him for 16 months. He was awesome. For days, Beasley repeatedly told LaSalle staff at the Johnson County Jail he was having chest pain. It was hard to breathe. <coughs> He'd been in a DWI crash about two weeks earlier in 2015. He'd been telling them for a week that something wasn't right. His wife talked to a jail official in person. And they didn't do anything about it. Beasley was dead the next day. It was senseless because we're talking antibiotics is all he needed. She's right. An autopsy showed he died from infectious complications resulting from a chest fracture. Beasley wasn't the only case of alleged medical neglect. She had such natural beauty. God, her eyes were so beautiful. Morgan Angerbauer, like many teens, experimented with drugs. She was booked into the Bowie County Jail run by LaSalle on June 28, 2016. At the time she went in, she was clean. Morgan was a diabetic, and without insulin, she would die. No one checked her for 13 hours. Morgan's mother wants you to see this video of the last moments of her daughter's life. She was just shy of turning 21. I'm sorry. Former LaSalle jailer Mason Cleghorn saw it all. Go get the I He's the one holding her head. Continues for one minute, 30 seconds. He's speaking out for the first time at the request of Morgan's mom. He watched a video. It could have been prevented. They've become friends since Morgan died. It's hard sitting here right now. That's, that's my baby. She's dead right there. Morgan's autopsy showed she had no illegal drugs in her system. What I've learned with up there, there's a lot of people that play possum. In police interviews, the nurse admitted she refused Morgan's request to go to medical. I told her no, because that's not how it works. She basically let Morgan die. The nurse was later convicted of negligent homicide. One year earlier, same jail, a different tragedy. Why should people care about Michael Savvy? He was a human being, a father, a husband, a, a brother. Michael Savvy was booked into LaSalle's Bowie County Jail on a misdemeanor. Savvy told the staff he had heart problems, diabetes, and asthma. Everybody knew he needed medication. Eric Hyped represents Savvy's widow. Instead of helping Savvy, LaSalle guards wrote him up, accusing him of faking his illness. I can't breathe, honey. Please. 
In these jail videos, you hear Sabby repeatedly say, I can't breathe. <laughs> A guard pepper sprays him. Remember, Sabby has asthma. <laughs> Guards take him to the nurse. Her exam literally lasted less than one minute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Instead of medicine, LaSalle jailers give him a shower. They take him back to his cell where they leave him. The way that they operated this particular jail is absolutely deplorable. About 12 hours later, he's found dead of a heart attack. There was supposed to be a corrections officer checking on him every 30 minutes, but that didn't happen. How do we know that didn't happen? Because we have video proof that it didn't happen. The officer documented that it happened every 30 minutes, but that was a fabrication of government records. What he just said is important. Over and over, investigators have found LaSalle guards saying that they had checked on prisoners when they hadn't. The LaSalle guard in Sabby's case testified in a deposition that LaSalle trained her to write down that checks were done even when they hadn't been done. Remember Morgan Angerbauer? LaSalle's own records show that jailers also falsified paperwork in her case. Situations like that, those are of great concern. Brandon Wood is the top county jail regulator in the state of Texas. LaSalle and some of their facilities have uh, had continued non-compliance issues. In case you still think, who cares? These are just inmates. They're people, and yes, they're in jail, and you know, and, and yes, they, you know, they've done things wrong. It could be anyone that this happens to, and if not you, it could be someone you love. We all make mistakes in life, but no one has the right to take another person's life. No one has that right. Besides Angerbauer and Sabby, our investigation revealed three other deaths, two in Waco and one in Parker County, all related to the LaSalle guards falsely claiming to have checked on prisoners.